Welcome back to the Anxious Tradeswoman podcast where I, your host, Louise, as a party, share with you what I've learned through the years, through the tears, so you don't have to. So this is episode 16 and we're talking part-time apprenticeships. And in this episode as well, I'm not going to go just through just part-time apprenticeships, but also different types of um, time flexibility and different ways to ask for time flexibility at your workplace. So let's start with apprenticeships. So apprenticeships are a contract that is between the apprentice, the workplace and the training centre. So usually like a TAFE or a technical college and this specific process is Australia referencing but a lot of the other, like pretty much everything besides this technicality will be for any other country. Um, so with that, with your apprenticeship contract, and I'm pretty sure in most other countries you'll have a con- some type of contract anyway and it'll just be managed by whoever manages it in your area. So that contract has different parts to it and with those, if you want to do a part-time apprenticeship, you pretty much just got to get everyone on board. And generally, so you've got those three parts to it. So you've got the apprentice, so I'm assuming yourself, whoever's listening, um, your workplace and your training centre, and then that is managed by someone called an ASIN. So that might be an MEGT or a Verdo or a Serena Russo, um, kind of, um, who else is there? Apprenticeship Skills Australia. There's a few different ones that could be managed by. So pretty much if you're the apprentice and you want to do a part-time apprenticeship, you'll have to talk to your ASIN in Australia. Um, If you're in another country, you'll just have to talk to whoever does your apprenticeship contract. So why would you want to do a part-time apprenticeship? So say if you're a mother um, and you need work flexibility, you can only work part-time, but you want to do an apprenticeship, um, that's one way you can ask for it. What employers would take on a part-time apprentice? At the moment with the skill shortage, this is the best time to to ask for a part-time apprenticeship if that's something that you want. Because a lot of the times for people who need part-time work, it's either you work part-time or you don't work at all. So within a workplace that has a skill shortage, a lot of people would, in places where they wouldn't consider part-time, would actually start to consider part-time now and really have a look into seeing how they could make it work. Um, Actually, one of my clients, I just finished up with her the other day before recording this. Um, We did our last call of our six-month one-on-one coaching program. Um, I'm going to miss her so much. She's Obviously, we're still going to stay in touch, but she's just not going to have a dedicated spot in my calendar. But she's actually doing a part-time apprenticeship. Her reason for doing it is because she's going through the process of a chronic illness, so her body actually gets fatigued really quickly. She still wants to do her trade. Her body just can't last a full five days. And that might be maybe a reason that you have as well. And this doesn't even just go just for apprentices. So that's a formal part-time apprenticeship. Then there's other ways to get time flexibility. So you generally have a standard amount of hours that you work each week or like a minimum hours, either 38, 40, 42, kind of a number around that usually equals, you know, different variables on an eight-hour workday depending on if they calculate lunch or don't calculate lunch and all that kind of stuff. So somewhere around those hours. But some things that you can do, um, well, I'll start with what I've personally done. So at my last full-time position – There was a few things that I negotiated. First was, now I'm getting this all muddled up because I don't have formal notes. Um, But anyway, working an extra hour a day and only working half a day Friday was something that I used to do. And our whole team used to do it because it used to take us a bit of extra time. This was when I was training and assessing. So we would, our standard eight hours was in front of the class eight hours, but we still had prep time before and after to get ready the next day so we would um we we would get an hour of overtime when we were on class but usually we would prep an hour before and finish up and like do an hour after so that hour that we weren't getting paid overtime those four hours so the Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday where we would do an hour of unpaid overtime each day we would finish at 12 on Friday end of story, we would go. 
we had done our hours. That's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is you can do four 10-hour days. So standard out, like for my situation, standard week was five eight-hour days. But if you do four 10-hour days, then it's still 40 hours and you get a day off. So this is something that I did while I was on the tools, um, the job before I was a trainer and assessor. And this was something that I negotiated because I was doing a lot of speaking and speaking at schools and kind of getting into that circuit, like pretty much starting to do what I do full time now. So I was kind of, it was getting a lot for me to kind of fit that in. And then that was a way, because I was doing a lot of overtime anyway. Um, So the work was there for me to do 10, 12 hour days. So started doing off standard 10 hour days. Um, just four days a week and then I had that day off that I could use to do whatever I wanted with. Another way you could do it as well is doing a nine-day fortnight. So out of two weeks, typically you'd work 10 eight-hour days, but instead of doing 10 eight-hour days, you do nine nine-hour days. Still the same amount of hours and you know you get that flexible day. Then there is, you know, the fact that you can work five days but instead maybe work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and have Monday off in case that's something that you do need. This flexibility, it can either be formally done, so something you do every week, or if you're in a bit of a bind and you're running out of leave and say you need to take half a day off on a Friday to do something that doesn't cover in sick leave, then you can do it as a one-off hey, this week I need to finish early on Friday. Am I able to stay back on Monday and Tuesday to make up those hours? This hour flexibility, like especially when you're paid by the hour, you know, ask for it. It's one of those things, if you don't ask, you don't know. And it can be like in our head, like this goes back to episode 13, society's programming. You can be like, but I'm bothering them, but I'm bothering them. But if it's, say, something, a family matter that you need to get sorted out, if it's time that you need to rest because you've got a lot of crap going on and you'd rather have, like, a solid day to rest rather than working and then trying to get in rest in the afternoon because you might have kids or other um, things going on as well, asking for that time flexibility to give yourself the time you need to do whatever it is, whether it's fun or not fun, (laughs) that you need to do. If it's something that you need to do or something that you want to do, if that is on your mind and you're distracted at work, you're more likely to hurt yourself and then you'll take time off anyway. So that's kind of a bit more annoying for your employer. That's the way that I see it as well, especially with sick leave too. I would rather take the day of sick leave rather than coming to work, injuring myself because I'm weak, distracted, not concentrating, got brain fog, um, aches and pains, you know, giving another coworker something. But, you know, being not at full capacity and hurting yourself gives you more time off. So that's another angle to look at it. So these are just a few things, like a few ways you can go about you know, first formally doing a part-time apprenticeship, getting everyone involved in the contract. And then there is, you know, you can formalise some flexible working arrangements, whether it's a nine-day fortnight, half-day Fridays, um, four 10-hour days to make up your 40-hour week. And then there is that kind of casual flexibility. Hey, I need it as a one-off this week. Can I do this instead? If you're at the point where you've got no leave left and you need that, say, full day, to do something, to sort something out. And like I said, for fun things and also for those not so fun things that come in in life. But anyway, if you would like support or help with, you know, asking for this time flexibility or anything else that I've spoken about in previous episodes or anything that you're going through that I haven't spoken about yet, you can join my free Facebook community, Tradeswomen Owning Their Power. Or if you would like one-on-one support or your business wanting to make the workplace better for tradeswomen and minorities, you can inquire through my website, louiseasaparty.com. I would also like to thank this week's, this episode's sponsor, MEGT. So MEGT are a national apprenticeship network provider 
and they host women in trade events all over the country with the next one being in South Australia. On Wednesday, the 25th of October, it's from 4 till 7 at Town Hall. Um, Yes, that's all the information I have for now. I will be attending this one, so I'm really looking forward to meeting um, any other South Australian tradeswomen. I have been down there for one of the other events, and you guys are amazing down there. Tradeswomen are amazing anywhere, and it's more lovely to meet new tradeswomen all the time and old friends. But I would love to see you there. Um, You can register um, at their website and also the link in the show notes for the event. So if you got any value out of this podcast episode, I'd love for you to share it with family, friends, on your Instagram story. Just so then this podcast and these skills can get into the hands of more amazing people and people can be happier and healthier at work. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next episode.